Well, hello, beautiful artisans on YouTube. I hope you're having a safe holiday, a happy holiday, um, a chance to do the things that you love to do. And you know, we're entering 2024, and I know I am getting ready to take one whole day, sit down and reassess and make a little list of things I really, really want to do to step up my um my game my interest my art my crafts everything that i do um and in all areas of my life so um including exercise <laughs> So anyway, that's uh, I'll share that with you, what I end up, uh, the highlights of what I end up um, writing down. So uh, today I wanted to show you what um, a yo-yo quilt is, what, what a yo-yo is. And um, so this is a yo-yo. Now it's a fabric yo-yo and uh, it goes yo-yo quilting goes back to like the 1920s, 1940s. They were really, really popular. Now, I have done some research in the past, and I had understood that yo-yo yo quilting began way back, uh, I want to say in the 1800s, um, in like mid, late 1800s, it um, in the southern part of the United States. Now, maybe in other parts of the world too, um, but uh, I'll do a little extra research and find out a little more detail. But when the yo-yo quilts were made, they were um, taking the yo-yos like this and um, sewing on the inside and connecting them. Now, my version, Carmela Teresa's version, <laughs> is a little different and it's a little easier. So you may adapt it, you may not. <laughs> and I'm going to show you today. We're, we're going to make uh, the yo-yo and uh, we're going to make it manually. Now, I will tell you there are yo-yo makers. For those of you who don't know, it's a little tiny plastic Actually, they come in all sizes, a little plastic round thing that you just sew around it, and it puts your yo-yo together super, uh, it's fast, but this is fast too, and I like this because I get a feel for the fabric, I'm coordinating it. If I want this to be closed more, I can really close it tight more. I guess you could do that with a contraption too, or the yo-yo maker. Um, or if I want it open more, I can leave this open. So um, now this, um, I, I made a yo-yo quilt this last year and I donated it to uh, the um, project, um, blanket project for refugees here in um, Vermont. So that's gone. But this is something that I kept and uh, this is where my version comes in very differently from the traditional version. What I do is, first of all, I give it a backing. And in uh, the South, when they were making these, they did not give it a backing. The yo-yos were connected, and that was the quilt. That was the blanket. Very light and airy and whatnot. So you don't have to give it a backing. Uh, you can make your quilts all different shapes. You can make you can make them standard, you know, 40 by 40 throw, or you can make them 72 by 72, you know, really big for your bed. Um, or you, you can make them uh, in a heart shape like I did. And um, now the way I connected them is I did the tie knot. Simple, simple, and adorable. I love the aesthetics of the tie knot. Love it. And this way I can see, I feel like the um, yo-yos are adhered. They're cohesive. They're, um, they're um, connected and strong. They're uh, in a, it, more sustainable than if you're going through and tying the knots on the inside. Now, you can do that if you don't want anyone to see threads. However, this is how I did it, and I 
I love it. So it, for me, was much easier to work with doing, uh, connecting them on the outside with the tie knots. Now, I've been showing this for a couple of years now, so maybe some people have picked up the idea, or maybe other people were doing it. I don't know. I know that that's how I do it. And um, so anyway, but you can choose whichever way you want to connect your yo-yos. So with that said, you can make the yo-yos different sizes. These yo-yos were made from a circle of fabric that was about 10 inch diameter. And um, so out of the 10 inch, you're going to get about a five inch yo-yo because you figure you're almost bringing them, bringing the circle to half of its size. So um, this is a uh, about four inch and this is an eight inch diameter circle. So you can either, you know, simply um, use cardboard or paper or whatever is easier for you to make your circle and just keep it and just cut out a few of these at a time. And, um, and then you just take needle and thread and I'm going to put the camera down now so you can see, whoops, there we go. And you turn your fabric over so you're looking at the underside of it and you're just going to, uh, now this might be a little bulky for you at the beginning when you fold your edges going around, but it will get super easy. So just put your uh, needle in the inside first so, you, so you're not, has a place to fall. And um, now you're going to begin, um, and it's really like a running stitch. If you've been doing sashiko stitching with me, um, then you know, just do three or four of these at a time. Now you can either lay them flat like that so you can see, but that might make things a little difficult for you because the, the goal is you want it to um, be pulled all together. So maybe you just pull it lightly together in, until you get oriented and you know really uh, what you're doing. You're folding this down only about an eighth of an inch, so not much. If you do a half an inch or an inch, it seem you know, that's okay. See how it comes out and whatever really is comfortable for you. So as you um, go along, you start to gain a little momentum. You do one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're gaining a little momentum in pulling through and you're getting a little more comfortable. And, and you see how easy this is. Now, some people say, oh my God, it, when you first start this, because I can actually remember when I first started this, uh, I felt like it took me forever. Seriously, I'm like, there's no way I'm making a quilt. Well, as I went along, I'm like, whoa. I was making them a little bigger. I was making them bigger and smaller, medium. And when you do that, when you do the different sizes, you seem to get your quilt together really quickly. I don't know why. Maybe because the monotony is now eliminated because you're making different sizes. You're using all different colors, you know, whatever. But um, it does help it uh, to move along quicker. So you're just, you're just using, you know, your left or right hand, whatever you're, you're working with to fold that down. And the other is your stitching. Now see, we're coming to the end of it already. That's why I'm doing this in real time, but I didn't want to use a really big yo-yo because, you know, I don't want to take lots and lots of time. I just want to give you the idea. Now we're getting closer to it folding. It's starting to fold in. And what you're going to do, what we're going to do when we get to the very end is what we want to do is, um, well, there's two ways. You can either go a few more stitches over or all the way through again. 
or a few stitches over and then turn around. So I have done uh, it various ways because I wanted to see uh, what was easier, what worked better, because when you get to the end, it can be a little bulky because now you're like, oh, especially, especially when you begin. So we're going to pull that over and center it. And we're going to fold the last few stitches here. We want to stay consistent. You do not want to, because you're at the end there, you don't want to just, you know, mess around and, and kind of just fold it over once. You want to keep, keep your little layers going right to the end. So there we go. Now we're at the end. And that looks nice. And that's in the center. That looks good. Just looking at it to make sure that's how I want it. I like these a little open because it makes like a little flower. Okay. Now, so I'm going to go over a couple of more stitches. And I'm going to come on the inside of my yo-yo. Whoops. There. So I went over a few more stitches, not many, just a few. Now I'm, I am I have the thread on the underside inside this yo-yo. So I'm going to tie a couple of knots because I want to make sure they stay. And now what I'm going to do is bring the thread, needle and thread on the inside. I want to center this first. And I'm going to bring the needle out that way. So what happens is the thread is falling on the inside of the yo-yo. And... Um, I'm going to pinch it up a tiny bit just so the thread will be on the inside. There. See, now that's nice. And um, so now when to connect these, I'm going to put them back to back. And I'm just going to do a very simple tie knot. And what I'm going to do, so see, look, I'm just going to pull it. Whoops, it, you didn't see that. I'm sorry. So I have them back to back, and I'm just going, and I made my threads double, and I'm just going to pull, pull it till I think it's a good length ready to tie, and I'm simply going to tie them. And I uh, love this. I tried sewing them together through the inside of the yo-yo. And for me, for my personality, for my temperament, <laughs> the way I do things, it weren't working. So this is how they stay together. And then you do, just keep doing that as you go along and they become beautiful quilts or what our table mat you can make quilts table mats pillows you can make a shawl a throw um you can make um uh, you can make anything out of these honestly if you wanted to make a vest <laughs> scarf a hat <laughs> goes on and on a wall piece you can make a wall piece and um so you know maybe we'll make a quilt again because once i start doing uh this again i get the feel for it and i love it i just and i have all this fabric the brighter and different uh fabrics really make a yo-yo quilt ha huh? so maybe we'll do that but um, I hope that this helped, and uh, let me know if this answered your question, um, or if you would like to see more. If you would like us to do a yo-yo quilt together, um, we can. 
and we could do it with the backing or we could not do a backing. I, I don't know about not doing a backing because I think the backing really uh, creates strength and sustainability for the, the quilt. Uh, I feel like without the backing, even though these are strong, that's a double knot, it's strong thread. I feel like if you're moving it around a lot, you've got the weight of whichever way you're holding that quilt. I could be wrong. But anyway, let me know what you think and you have a beautiful day.